Australia's defense posture is undergoing a profound transformation, and while much attention has been devoted to the nuclear submarine deal under AUKUS Pillar 1, the less discussed but potentially more disruptive element lies within Pillar 2. This is where Australia, alongside the United States and the United Kingdom, seeks to leverage advanced technologies such as artificial intelligence, autonomous systems, cyber capabilities, space-based assets, and hypersonic weapons. Unlike the submarine project, which is measured in decades and hundreds of billions of dollars, Pillar 2 promises faster, more flexible solutions that could alter the regional balance within a much shorter time frame. The question is whether these ambitions represent a genuine game-changer, or whether they risk remaining little more than a grand vision on paper. The financial dimension is the first point of scrutiny. Canberra has earmarked billions of Australian dollars for Pillar 2 initiatives across the coming decade, though exact breakdowns often remain vague. When compared with the staggering sums tied up in nuclear submarine procurement, Pillar 2 looks like the more affordable route. Yet even affordable, in this context, still means immense costs for a middle power. For Australia, the attraction lies in speed. Drones, AI, or cyber systems can be deployed in years rather than decades, and upgrades can be iterative. In an era where the pace of technological innovation can rapidly render capabilities obsolete, this agility is critical. Still, allocating resources to such programs while simultaneously financing the massive submarine effort risks overextension, both financially and industrially. One of the most publicized areas is the development of drones and AI-driven systems. Australia has already tested loyal wingman drones designed to operate alongside fighter aircraft, and Pillar 2 provides the framework to integrate these into a wider allied ecosystem. The promise of drone swarms for surveillance, strike missions, or even anti-submarine warfare could provide Australia with asymmetric tools against larger adversaries. Yet comparisons with China reveal the scale of the challenge. Beijing has demonstrated drone swarm capabilities at air shows and is investing heavily in AI-enabled command and control. Australia's defence industry is still developing the depth and scale needed to keep pace, meaning close reliance on American and British technology transfer. The fundamental question is whether these partnerships will turn Australia into a co-developer or merely a testing ground. Hypersonic weapons represent another flagship area. Australia and the United States have been co-developing hypersonic cruise missiles under the Southern Cross Integrated Flight Research Experiment. These weapons, if successful, could provide strike ranges that vastly extend the reach of the Royal Australian Air Force. However, this is an intensely difficult technology to master, with challenges in propulsion, materials, and guidance under extreme speeds. China, by contrast, has already fielded the DF-17 system and conducted numerous tests. The concern for Australia is twofold. First, whether it can field hypersonic systems before China consolidates its advantage. And second, whether such weapons will be genuinely sovereign or functionally dependent on US supply chains. On the defensive side, hypersonic interception remains a problem no state has solved, which adds to the risks of escalation. Space and cyber are also central to Pillar 2's ambitions. In space, Australia seeks to develop small satellite constellations to enhance intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance capabilities. The benefit is clear. 
Geographic distance makes Australia dependent on resilient satellite networks for both early warning and tactical awareness. In cyber, closer integration with Five Eyes partners under AUKUS provides access to some of the most advanced capabilities in the world. Still, the challenge is not only technical, but also industrial. Space programs require engineers, manufacturing bases, and stable budgets. Cyber resilience requires constant investment and highly trained personnel. These are not quick fixes, and Australia must compete globally for scarce human capital. Behind all of these technologies lies the question of industrial capacity. Australia's defence industry has traditionally been limited in scale, oriented toward specific niche areas rather than the broad and deep ecosystems of the United States or China. Pillar 2 assumes that with allied cooperation, Australia can absorb, adapt, and eventually co-produce advanced systems. But history shows that technology transfer is never seamless. Intellectual property restrictions, delays in joint projects, and bureaucratic frictions could slow progress. The risk is that Pillar 2 becomes a collection of pilot programs without sufficient funding or political will to scale up. In that sense, critics argue it risks being a wish list rather than a strategy. From a strategic perspective, the appeal of Pillar 2 is clear. It offers Australia tools that can offset the raw numerical advantages of a power like China. Swarms of drones, hypersonic strikes, and resilient space assets could complicate Chinese military planning and strengthen deterrence. Moreover, because these systems can be developed incrementally, they avoid the all-or-nothing stakes of the nuclear submarine program. Yet this very flexibility also creates risks of diffusion. Many small programs can fragment resources, and without consistent prioritization, the result could be broad ambition with limited concrete capability. The ultimate judgment on AUKUS Pillar 2 will hinge not just on technology, but on time. If Australia can field credible systems within the next five to ten years, these may significantly reinforce its deterrence posture in the Indo-Pacific. If, however, the projects stall, or if costs balloon while China continues to advance, then Pillar 2 risks being dismissed as a dream too far. This is the tension at the heart of the strategy. Bold ambition balanced against limited means. AUKUS Pillar 2 represents both opportunity and peril for Australia. It is a chance to leap ahead in technologies that define modern warfare, but also a gamble on whether a middle power can truly sustain cutting-edge development alongside partners whose interests may not always perfectly align. For now, it remains uncertain whether this will prove to be the technological equaliser Australia hopes for, or merely a well-intentioned vision that struggles against industrial and fiscal reality. If you found this analysis useful, consider supporting the channel with a like or a subscription. Your encouragement helps ensure we can continue exploring complex defence questions like AUKUS Pillar 2 which will shape security in the Indo-Pacific for decades to come.